Welcome to the Black Knight Nation podcast, your source for the latest information about your Army Black Knights, with your host, Sal Interdonato. Hey, what's up, Black Knight Nation? We're back with another Old Grads podcast. My uh, co-host, Steve Anderson, is looking to get on later on in the show. But first, we'd like to welcome Justin Schaff, former Army uh, defensive lineman, linebacker, right, during your time, Justin? Um, oh, yeah. Athletes. Yep, uh, the old double eagle flex, uh, band, whip bandit uh, position, yep. <laughs> there you go, there you go. We're going to talk about Justin's career as an Army football player, his time serving our country, and now he's involved with the Atlanta Falcons organization as a scout for the Falcons. Um, first off, if you want to uh, follow us on the – podcast platforms we're just about everywhere on in the podcasting world you can give us a, a, a subscribe you can rate you can review our podcast and we also post these podcasts on youtube live and uh periscope live so uh justin uh thanks again for joining us um you know remembering um the time that you had at west point as a football player you know you're what your junior year you go to the bowl game in the armed forces bowl game and win and then your senior year you you had you had a great core that you talked about like the steve erzingers and the andrew rodriguez's of the world in the linebacking core uh, you're a guy who really um from what i remember covering the team you're a guy who really kind of had worked your way up right from from the from the maybe a, a scout team role maybe to to get the opportunity to play on the field just talk about your your beginnings of your army career and how you had to work for almost everything you got as a football player there. Oh yeah. Um, you know, you know, first thanks Sal for having me on the show. Um, great to, uh, great to be on here as a guest, especially with, um, the lineup you guys have had. Um, I'm certainly on the low end of, <laughs> of, all, of all the greats you've had on, but it's, it's a true honor to be here. And yeah, my, my journey, I was, um, I was a prepster, uh, and every bit of your, I shouldn't say typical academy football player, but, um, you know, under, not, not tall enough, not fast enough, uh, not strong enough, uh, but uh, was uh, found a home in the linebacking core, uh, play at the prep school, and um, really just made a living on special teams. Uh, would have been my sophomore year, um, kind of found myself as a four-core uh, special teams guy uh, and just made my way playing through all those sophomore, junior, and uh, senior year. Um, and, uh, just had, had the privilege of playing alongside Steve Anderson, uh, Steve Erzinger, Josh McNary, uh, and, you know, being in the same position group as, uh, Andrew Rodriguez. So, uh, it was a lot of fun and, um, yeah, gosh, that is probably my journey. Uh, if I could best describe it. I remember just the energy you brought to the field when you played. I mean, I, I think I recall my memory banks, like you making a tackle and just like kind of pumping it up. And I mean, just what was it, playing at Mikey Stadium? I mean, some people take that for granted, but what was it like to, you know, get out there in the historic stadium like that and play for you? Know, you're representing, you're representing the country. Yeah, no, I dream come true. And uh, I, I, had a lot of energy, uh, <laughs> probably a lot all pent up there when you're only getting a couple snaps to go out there and, and leave it on the field. Um, and yeah, playing in Mikey stadium, historic, historic, um, environment, uh, backdrop, like it's something still to this day, uh, you, you sit back and reflect on, um, just how special it truly was with the, with the core and, um, just a, a faithful singing on brave old army team and <laughs> another first time army. Like you just, you, you never forget it. Um, it's, it's a truly special place and uh, type of thing. I, you know, often think back and think of guys now probably going through the recruiting process. Like there's, there's no more sacred hollow ground, uh, you know, than Blake field and, you know, Mikey stadium. How did it start for you recruiting wise? How did you have an interest to serve or how did army kind of find you, so to speak? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And definitely a um, fun part of like what I articulate is like my life's journey in that um, I was a dreamer. Uh, gosh, uh, that, that kid who is writing out his goals, writing out his dreams that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go, play at Notre Dame and I'm going to go win a Heisman trophy and I'm going to be the number one overall draft pick. And, um, 
bless my parents in terms of the background I was brought up and the home life where they were so supportive and uh, build me up. And I'll never forget this one. My, my father told me in his infinite wisdom that, you know, Justin, I hope all your dreams come true and I want to be supportive of it uh, until the cows come home. But um, even if they do all the come true, uh, and this is showing a little bit of my age here, um, <laughs> that even Dan Marino can't play, couldn't play football forever. <laughs> and um, football is going to come to an end. And what is going to be next for you when football is done? And that might've been also a subtle message of saying like you're five foot nine and <laughs> you know, you're not going to get many, many other big uh, schools calling you to reach a lot of those goals. But even aside from that, it was a real aha moment of like no better place to go play division one football. I uh, get a free education to a world premiere education. And Oh, by the way, have a guaranteed job when it was all said and done <laughs> serving in the United States army. So, um, in, in that practical sense, uh, and you know, value set of selfless service and uh, humility of being behind a cause and a purpose to put others before yourself uh, was really an attractive piece to say, yeah, let's um, let's go to uh, the banks of the Hudson and play football for the Black Knights. Was it a matter of you reaching out back then and sending in film, or how did they kind of how did they kind of get? How did they find you, so to speak? Yeah, that's that's, that's a fun one. Um, so I had played. At, um, I'm an Erie, Pennsylvania native, and had um, pretty good early high school career. Um, but uh, as a sophomore, was getting some attention um, from schools in the area. Um, University of Buffalo, Ohio University, um, even Pitt, West Virginia, and Ohio State were taking interest. Like, you know, this, this kid's flying all over the field. Probably thought I was going to grow a little bit more, too. <laughs> but um, then my junior year, I broke my femur. And um, when the largest bone in the human body snaps and you can't play an entire season, uh, in the most pivotal year in recruiting, your junior year, uh, you just kind of fall through the cracks. So um, was able to come back and play my senior year. And um, we just reinitiated contact with all those schools. And frankly, Sal, every school, you just started pushing it out to, to all of them. And uh, uh, fortunately, you know, Army was um, taking an interest saying, OK, this is, seems like our kind of guy. Um, and if anything, we've got pretty an unlimited <laughs> amount of folks we can bring in here. So uh, let's, um, let's get this guy in here and see what he's got. So there we are in Fort Monmouth in 2007. And uh, what, throw my hat up in the air, May of 2012. Nice. But before that, you wa have you had watched Army at all? Did you know anything about West Point before you got, you know, into it? I was I was familiar with it. Um, we had a, I had a, I want to say two family friends that one of my high school teammates actually was a um, was a graduate. Uh, his me, high school teammate's father was a graduate, and um, we had a family friend who's. Uh, gosh, this is, this is funny. His, um, what, who, who I took to the proms older brother, um, was a, was a grad. So, uh, I, I was familiar with West Point knew, knew about it. Um, and it just was crazy to think that there was an opportunity to play football there, which is at the end of the day, what really made my heart beat. Yeah, no doubt. And then you, you, so you have your playing career, right? And when you're done, when you graduate West Point, your football time is not over yet because you were you were prep school. You coached at the prep school or no? I did, yes. So, um, yeah, immensely rewarding to kind of get back uh, to where it all started. Yeah, I mean, is that kind of your first kind of introduction into, like, you know, coaching and, like, just looking at, like, football from a different perspective, so to speak, than obviously the playing, the playing, day, the playing days? Yeah, and it was uh, – something I was just so thankful to have the opportunity for and grateful because, um, yeah, you know, I, I just got to start owning the store a little bit more. It didn't make me the most popular guy when I was walking around West Point. Right. But, um, you know, I've come to kind of appreciate and accept that, that I talked about my father's influence in regards to seeing clearly and making a decision, but let's also look at that decision was made on a football basis <laughs> to get, to get an opportunity to play some more um, college football. And uh, it's what made my heart beat. And it's what always, um, you know, I, I found immensely important. So uh, 
to get an opportunity than arguably one of my favorite, if not my most favorite assignment in the military to then coach football. Um, you know, at the place where it all started and a point in the journey as well, when you're really uh, weighing a lot of options of, you know, hey, I've got this year that didn't charge my eligibility. Like I've produced some more tape. Can I go somewhere else? Um, and one of the best decisions I've made, you know, um, outside, you know, of, of my soulmate <laughs> and, 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 mar- and frankly, her feeling sorry enough for me to marry me. But um, like, uh, honest to goodness, Sal, like, making the election then to go to West Point and, you know, finish the journey uh, is, is something I'm, I'm so thankful for. And to have that opportunity to give back to cadet candidates, what was in the blink of an eye five years ago for me at the time uh, was immensely rewarding. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so after, uh, after you leave army prep, now you have a, uh, your military career last six years you, you served, right? I mean, yeah. What, what was that like to transition into an officer after, you know, having that time at the academy and then maybe have, you know, a little bit more, you know, that extra six months, so to speak, as the Army prep coach to like, you know, slow down that, that, that five months. Because, you know, it's five months, uh, five years, sorry, five years you, is, is the requirement, but you, you went a little extra on that. What was the transition like to becoming an officer? Yeah, and, and this is going to be a bit bold and audacious here, Sal, cause, and it's a great question first off, but like um, relatively seamless, meaning like football is in team sports. Uh, so, you know, we, we can expand this far and wide, but, you know, being biased towards football, it is the ultimate correlation and parallel to the military. So if you know how to be a part of a team, if you know how to um, lead those around you, uh, like it was in lead with and work with your peers. Like <laughs> it's the same thing in the military. So um, now to, to offer some semblance of realism. Yes. It was uh, um, not getting a chance to be around ball all the time, which was <laughs> you know something you miss, but um, you just treat it like a football team. Your, uh, your platoon is your, is your defensive unit, your offensive unit, your company is your team. Um, like you're just, you're part of something that's um, very similar. And uh, it was something that I was like, Hey, this is, this has got some likeness. So why not uh, keep rocking and rolling here with this military thing? So um, yeah, uh, it's a long roundabout way. Like it, it had its differences, but in all actuality, I just treated like, you know, going to a different football team. That's all. Yeah, Steve mentions this a lot where he's stationed right now. He he says that it, he's around centers like Ryan Paulus is where he's stationed. Bryce Holland is where he's stationed. And um, also Zach Peterson, I believe, is around that area. So, I mean, did you – when while you were serving, did, did you have your times where you would bump into maybe ex-teammates or ex-football players during your time serving and helping you, you know, maybe accomplish a goal or a mission, so to speak, it, that was uh, involving your military service? Oh, with, without a doubt, what was what was fun kind of, I wouldn't say, like my era was on the tail end. There was actually um, a big group that was starting to, I should say infiltrate, but um, find themselves in the Ranger Regiment. And like it was turned into this fun, like army football um, experience. So like the the Brad Kellys, the Andrew Rodriguez's, the Austin Bars, um, you know, the Max Jenkins for, I uh, like it was, I was at Fort Benning. So like, they would be coming through uh, for RASP and they'd be, uh, <laughs> you know, hanging out with Justin and Fort Benning. And it was a blast. Like you would, you would love that. And then they were at Savannah and, um, you know, uh, you know, for the guys that were in 175. So um, you were having similar experiences, different, but you were having shared experiences that uh, you could lean on one another and support and, um, you know, know that, you'll always be teammates and it's always one of those fun things I think for folks from the outside seeing like these guys just uh, they're like, they truly brothers, like they they are brothers and um, it's the the cliche and um, gosh, you know, I employed by a franchise that coined itself around it, but like there is something to be said about true meaning of brotherhood. And that is something the army football uh, team has and lives out 
fully. Like, gosh, you know, Steve's not with us right now, but it's Steve that's reaching out saying, hey, like, come on this show. It's like, like yeah, brother. Like, and you mean it when you say it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's cool. I'm uh, rambling a little bit now, but uh, the, the brotherhood is something that's, that's really strong and powerful. Yeah, I think it's something that unless you truly go through it, because people, uh, you know, you see it a lot in recruiting, too, that – the, the brotherhood's message is getting out there to on the recruiting side where maybe they these kid these um, high school seniors have a chance to maybe have a conversation with a, a former football player or a current football player and they realize how strong I heard one kid from California that I talked to who committed he said he heard coach Saturnio the special teams coach talk so much about the brotherhood he just it was something that he wanted to be a part of you know because of the different examples of it and not being inside you know, the locker room, I'm not privy to the, the specific examples, but it's got to be like, you just put, I mean, you're playing for the love of the game, right? You're playing for the love of the game while you're, while you're going through a, a pretty rigorous, right, education at West Point and, and training too. And you need some support sometimes to get you through those tough days, right? I mean, you need, you need that brotherhood to get you through some of those tough days. So, No doubt. Yeah, you are, it's, it's military ads, football, that you're only as strong as the person you're left and you're right. And if you don't have anybody you're left and you're right, um, like, how do you get through anything? Like, um, and that, that's, that's what, and that's getting really philosophical, but you know, football particularly, uh, that, that's its bedrock and that's its foundation. And that's what makes the army football experience, uh, truly special. If you guys are watching live here on, uh, Twitter or YouTube, and you'd like to post a comment or question, uh, we'll entertain those. Um, we're here with Justin Schaff. He is a scout for the Falcons. He's a former Army defensive end, linebacker, uh, 2012 West Point grad. Um, now, um, Justin, talk to us about, I mean, I guess your military career comes to an end. And then how do you end up starting this uh, NFL journey, so to speak? Yeah. So um, what military – I'll, I'll never, I'll never forget it, Sal. Like I was, um, you know, I we talked about the transition into the military, and uh, you know, I, I jumped right in, got after it, um, you know, tried to do the cool guy stuff, you know, graduated airborne school, ranger school, um, you know, went to the maneuver captain's career course as a field artillery officer. Like I was thinking, all right, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out, and I'm gonna get this thing rocking and rolling, um, you know, into a career with the intention to at some point, get back to football. You know, we start this conversation and the journey as to, um, you know, what led me to football is, excuse me, what led me to West Point, right, is loving football and opportunity to play more football. And, you know, ultimately, uh, excuse me, falling in love then with the military, figuring out, okay, how how can we have a experience to get back there? Um, and uh, thinking, okay, right, it's and all the guys that have had a command and in serve right no okay you're starting to figure out okay how do i you know what's my years left in the queue to get command and then switch here to get this kd responsibility and i'm kind of going through all that wicked as i'm deployed in iraq um i'll never forget it sal it's january uh 2017 and i'm in the dfac uh in erbil iraq but does come across the screen as a ticker uh espn uh, announces that Los Angeles Rams hire 30 year old head coach Sean McVay and Sal, I had just turned 28 years old and it was one of those aha moments of uh, what, like the time is now because <laughs> the industry, whether you like it or not, you got to start at the bottom and you got to work your way up. Just it's like military. You don't get, just get pinned on as a general, like <laughs> you're, you're um, you know, in the officer and you're going to be a second lieutenant before you become a first captain, et cetera. Right. Um, so I was like, okay, like this is, this is the time to go. Um, cause if you, if you wait, if you go command eight years or 10 years to get the GI bill to transfer over then 20 years in a career, like you're going to be an old fart. And <laughs> like, and oh, no, that's for all the listeners, right? That's not to say that you're old if you're in your forties or fifties, but in, in NFL years, starting at the bottom, they're not going to, um, be able to bring you in. And how are you ever going to rationalize coming in, um, at the bottom making, pennies uh when you've in most cases been married family and had a you know successful officer career so all that stuff aside it was a decision of okay how do i um how do i best figure this out and it's the old uh, 50 cups of coffee uh play in um 
you know, folks that are putting out there for the military transition. And one of the best things going in the Department of Defense, and this would be my public service announcement, is the DOD Skills Bridge Program. I'll say it one more time. The DOD Skills Bridge Program. Uh, the Army particularly has what's called the, its, its version of it is the Army Career Skills Program. And that, Sal, was kind of my, uh, if you will, Willy Wonka golden ticket. And um, what I was able to more or less offer to teams, if you will, uh, as you're knocking on every door, uh, trying anything under the sun to grab their attention, is the Department of Defense, specifically the Army and their career skills program, will allow you to do an internship with any organization. So this is far reaching and wide. Um, it's not narrowly tailored to any sector, an opportunity to do an internship for four months free of charge of the organization. And um, I was free hire um, in a time period that, as I mapped it out, January 2018 to, um, I took it out to April or May, um, can't remember the exact months, but I, I can go get the coffee. I can go pick up the, the uh, copies off the coffee machine. I can go make the airport runs to pick up a draft prospect. Um, when they need an extra set of hands, they can exercise a veteran initiative and they don't have to pay a cent because I am um, free hire. Now, I'm not finished because I love this in terms of being one of the few things I've come across where it's win-win for everybody. So this not only wins for the transitioning soldier because they get an opportunity to get some experience under their belt and have something on their resume that's a little bit more recognizable than um, trying to read through what is a kinetic strike, what is um, what is a MORTEP, all these things that um, we have on our resumes that uh, civilian folks or you know in private sector just won't know anything about. Now you can actually put something recognizable um, if you're working at 3M or you're working at Canon or Mercedes or SoFi, um, like you've got some sort of experience there, uh, which is a good hedge to be able to get yourself a chance for better employment once you're get actual employment when you're out. Secondly, to the Department of Defense, what's the commander most important? But what's the commander most um, concerned about and what's most important? Readiness. By this individual being in the department, being in the DOD skills research program, um, my memory serves right there, classified as quad nine, um, which more means excess in transition. So they don't count against their books and their headcount. So they can make the request up to HRC to get the backfill uh, in their formation. Um, and last but not least, the employer more or less gets a chance to exercise a veteran initiative, doesn't cost them a cent, and they can try before they buy it. Um, so this is a long, long winded pump up for the department, the uh, DOD skills bridge program and the army career skills program. Cause I think more folks got to take advantage of it. And long story short, it was a way to get the Falcons to um, be interested, bring me in. And then uh, they felt sorry enough for me to keep me on full time. So, so here we are. <laughs> yeah. Right. So at the beginning, man, what are some of the, you mentioned some of the things, what are some of the things that you're kind of volunteering yourself to do just to you know, start that, that, that rapport and start getting your name you know, and just notice, so to speak. Oh, so this, this is a fun one. Actually, another great question, Sal. This, this is the pump up of the West Point Network. And this would be, uh, if there's any recruits like listening to this, this is why it's not the only reason why, but the network of the academies is incredible. And um, another public service announcement, I always give credit where credit's due, uh, specifically to the Commit Foundation. Um, where um, if we rewind to my knowledge of West Point, um, the <laughs> uh, gal I took to the prom, whose older brother is a grad, yeah. his wife runs a foundation called the Commit Foundation and um, made it its small audience, mostly for the secret squirrel community. And they were nice enough to let a junior military out and they're mostly career so they were nice enough to career transitioning military officers um, and enlisted. Uh, they were nice enough to let a junior, mil junior military officer come in and uh, um, be a part of the program. And they were having a transitioning veterans workshop in Atlanta. And um, lo and behold, the individual who was uh, giving the fireside chat to about a group of 20 um, was the CEO of Arthur M. Blank, Sports and Entertainment, 1986, West Point grad, Steve Cannon. 
and um, with Steve's presence there, uh, he's interfacing with literally everybody. And um, by that interaction of more or less proposing the DOD skills bridge program and saying, I'll do anything. Like I understand how this, I, I've never served, I've never been in the NFL, but conceptually I understand from the outside, you start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, if I can start at the bottom as an intern for free, I'll do all the grunt work and I will prove my value to somehow find a home. And uh, it's like, you know what? I, I don't know what, you know, I can do necessarily on the business side, but at least I can do is just push it on over to uh, Thomas Dimitrov, our GM and see what he can do. And it's how the rest of history. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, right? You, there is a, a strong West point connection with the Falcons, right? With yourself, with, uh, with uh, Bob Sutton, and Ben Kotwika, there was that strong. So uh, you, you were talking about off camera. You were talking about what it was like, kind of to be like the to, to be a part of those, to wear the same Falcons emblem with in the in the same um, offices and um, as uh, Bob Sutton and, and Ben Kotwika, right? Oh gosh, Sal, yeah. That um, there's been a lot of joys um, being with the Falcons and serving with this organization, uh, but having those two as teammates uh, and working alongside, like it's still even weird to say that because of having, when I played, looking up to them, like Ben Kawika, a legend, um, Bob Sutton, the, uh, the all-time great Army football coach, like, uh, you know, getting a chance to talk with these guys on a day-to-day basis, be in meetings out there on the grass with them, like, um, like I said, just a pure joy and uh, it's so immensely, um, you know, rewarding to like and honored. Like I can't even find the words like it's it's still something I think about. I'm like, this is crazy. Like I'm I'm uh, I'm with these guys. It's really cool. Yeah. So after the, the whole internship, what, what what's your next step up the ladder, so to speak? Where, what, what do you do after that? Yeah. So I was. um so after that, you know, so as the internship was going, it was a, um, a very, uh, very cool experience. I um, was able to help in a lot of different areas. So I would be assigned kind of some projects in the scouting department. I'd be um, assigned some projects in the uh, football administration, football operations, like cap and contracts, uh, salary cap type stuff. And then, you know, some of our football technologies, analytics uh, projects and the general manager at the time, Thomas Dimitrov would be kind of asking my feedback on, you know, what it was I was experiencing through the course of these um, projects with the different departments. And um, I recognize this phenomenon, Sal, like that uh, every time someone would knock on the door of the general manager, his hairs would stand up on his arms. <laughs> like you, didn't, you could see it, you could feel it. Um, and uh, I was just doing this triangulation. Like he's got an executive assistant and um, I kind of equate that. He's got an aide to camp, just like the military. And he had a director of football operations. So I'm like, okay, that's an S3. So like you know, the ops are being synced and um, he's got the aide to camp. I'm like, where the heck is the XL? Where's the chief of staff? like synchronizing these administrative and operational elements to give him the time and space to be the strategic leader. And, um, you know, I more or less just kind of gave him that feedback. And I said, like, I, I, I'm telling you, TD, like if, if you had that function or at least something to uh, better synchronize that for you, uh, you know, you'd have that time and space and your arm, the hairs on your arms wouldn't be standing up. And I said, like, they're, Standing things all over the place in Silicon Valley, um, you know, and uh, Wall Street, uh, and Scott Military Heritage, the chief of staff, and um, just kind of left it at that. And he's like, "Oh my gosh, I wanted that yesterday, and you're going to be the guy." <laughs> so, um, for uh, literally, um, you know, an entire season uh, went off, kind of kicking off a chief of staff construct uh, to him. Um, and the organization. And I'd say like, as it was something that was different, doesn't really have much of a uh, place in a football operation. It's starting to have a life in the uh, coaching side. You know, we've got um, 
Clayton Kendricks Holmes, right, for uh, Coach Munkin and a lot of other staffs have got this um, military, or not military, but the chief of staff embedded in their um, model, but uh, the football operation didn't have it. Um, it took a little bit of time getting used to, uh, and I'd say it, it may not have gotten the full win behind it, but it was a lot of special projects, a lot of research and development, and you know, who are you kidding? You're getting a chance to be the right-hand man. Um, and in close proximity to a general manager to where you see behind the curtain, you understand how the system works and um, really come to appreciate and better grasp what a football operation is in the NFL. So uh, it was great. It was, uh, that, that was, that was how, it, uh, how it started. And now we're into year three, um, got a chance to double dip, did a uh, pro scouting deal um, through our free agency and draft period. Uh, and then this summer made the all uh, coveted COVID-19 buzzword of a pivot to, um, uh, being a college scout. So, uh, um, I am responsible for the mid Atlantic, uh, area where, uh, my States include South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Wow. Wow. I was going to ask you about that right now. What, what's that like to be a college scout during a pandemic where there are no, there are no, there's no senior bowls anymore, right? There's no senior showcases anymore to really watch. And there's really, is everything via like a zoom is everything because you can't even go to like a campus and um, I don't know if there'll be pro days in the, in the next couple of months. Who knows? Right. We just don't, I mean, maybe down South there might be, but a beast who knows, you know, what, what's that been like for you? Yeah. Um, a great question. Like it's you just, it's taken a lot of, it's been fun to take a lot of your military training and background and just be adaptable, be agile, um, you know, to whatever comes, comes our way. Cause like it has been nothing that we've ever uh, seen or expected. And that's, that's across landscape. So I'm saying the obvious now, but uh, it's been a lot of zoom calls uh, to answer your question. Um, the practices, we've only been able to go to practices that a team is hosting a practice in their stadium. Um, the NFL and the college relations have just not wanted to keep us into uh, close proximity, uh, keep folks safe. Um, but we've been allowed to attend games, uh, and that's really been our only you know, on-the-road work um, this year. So a lot of the in-person evaluation, a lot of that, those data points um, – you know, we're, we haven't got as much as we traditionally have, uh, you know, and gosh, there's so much gold that comes from those practices, you know, especially when they're, they're live and they're going against one another. So um, that's been hard, but the, the information gathering, um, you know, in its own way has been unique because we're, we're getting a chance to all, I think from the college's standpoint, they probably like it because now they can get all of us in the room at one time and yeah. they don't have to be, you know, having their, um, you know, regular day where, uh, gosh, the, you got a Falcon scout coming through on Tuesday, and then you've got a um, Saint scout coming through on Wednesday, and then a Raven scout on Friday. <laughs> you know, you, you can't just like, okay, here's the dump. Um, the, you know, the, the liaison strength coach, they're probably thinking like, all right, this is great. I can spend more I, less time to deal with the scouts, which we try not to be too, too much of a nuisance thing. We love the relationship, but yeah, it's uh it's been a, a fun year in COVID. It must be as a former Army football player to see uh, the, the number of Army football players in the NFL kind of rise over the last couple of years, right? To see that, you know, Ali's been a staple for the Steelers and now to see guys like Cole Christensen and Elijah Riley and, you know, and Brett Toth get their chance, right? And getting that Army, you, know, you always, you know, things have changed military-wise but when they were allowed to leave to pursue the NFL, but now that it's kind of been open to pursue right away, you know, it's good to see like the, the army football players out in the NFL, no doubt. Right. Oh my gosh. It's, it's awesome. Um, and I, I always love trying to give the kudos and thank yous to those that have like helped along the way. And like Josh and uh, Ali are, are guys that, that did that, you know, and that's, that's more to be oh, proof in the pudding with the, the army football brotherhood, like, you know, to call up former teammates and say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get in the NFL. I've, I'm trying to use the career skills program. And I, I kid you not, Sal, like, uh, Ali had me to training camp in Latrobe. <laughs> like, had me at the same place in college. Like, he just brought me with one of the guys. Like, literally brought me into the film room. And I'm sitting there right next to Marquise Pouncey. 
and like we're just we're having a conversation. It's to Castro. Hey, he introduced me to you'll love this. Introduced me to, to uh, Kevin Colbert, and he's like, "Hey, uh, hey, Kevin, this is Justin Schaff. We um, he wants to have your job one day." <laughs> Hey, thanks, thanks, big fella. This is this is great. Like, but a, but a dream come true. Um, yeah. he, he gave me a experience. God, I never forget. Like just sitting there, um, right outside the dorms, and just riffing with Mike Tomlin, stepping to it. And I'm like, Ali, like, we haven't talked maybe in two or three years, and you are just that. It's the brotherhood, and and what and what you do. And I can remember Josh when I got uh, was saying that I was going to get out and try and get in the in the. Um, into the league, like Josh Al Ford, someone I, I used to know at the Jags, or some, a contact I had at the Jags is with the, the Jags at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kat Wika, like willing to take a call and give me advice. I remember meeting him in Kansas City when uh, he was the special teams coordinator for the Redskins. And they were in town to play, and I was at Fort Riley, and I drove over and um, you know sat down with me in the lobby. Like uh, I can't give enough thanks to the Brotherhood and what they do, and it's very exciting now seeing to answer your question, the guys that are in the league and playing, and I. I think from a, a recruiting standpoint, like young men should be thinking about like back to words of wisdom from my father and that like, even if you want to go to the NFL, like you, you can't play football forever, but check it out. You now have an opportunity to go play in the NFL because of, um, you know, what those before you are doing at a high level. So uh, this can give you all the best, all the best of the worlds with a education, a Great uh, football team uh, on Saturdays, opportunity to play on Sunday, and oh, by the way, um, a job to serve in the best team, the Army team, <laughs> the U.S. Army thereafter. I remember a couple of years back, I think Ali was um, like one of the, uh, like a spring game captain, honorary captain, and he brought the Castro with him. to The West. The Castro came with him to see West Point uh, maybe for the first time. So. It's great to hear the appreciation, not just from, you know, from other players in the in the league too, right? Because I'm guessing there is there's a big time appreciation for the academy and what guys are doing, like what Ali has done and served, you know, what you have done and served. You know, I mean, there's there's an appreciation there, no doubt that holds true through you know the league, so to speak. Oh, for sure. Like um, I can, uh, it's a type of thing. Uh, I, I can remember Dan Quinn, our former head coach, like saying something once before by like Ben Kotwika and like there was a there was a question like how is he going to handle um, you know pressure and maybe some situation and it was like the guy has flown H sixty four helicopters in Iraq like <laughs> he's going to be fine with any sort of of, of pressure in a football game and uh, you know it's. So that, that respect, it, it runs in coaching ranks, player ranks, obviously with Ali and what he's done. And, um, you know, it's uh, there, there's a lot to be said about the experience. And um, it's 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 cool to get that respect. But also, you know, it's been rewarding to be able to earn that respect, too, um, you know, because it's certainly something that's not, not handed to you. And, um, you know, guys are going out there and earning their marks and wreck the salad. I'm just trying to keep up with them. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's great catching up with you, Justin. One last question. What's the, what's kind of your goal now that you're in the league? You, you, this is your third season. Where do you see yourself in the next few years as far as progressing? Yeah. I, um, I'd love to stay in the space. Um, and you know, just, and this is such a cliche cop out, but it's, but it is the honest to God truth. Sal. like, I, I just want to be able to contribute to a football operation however I can. And if, if, and add value. Uh, to, to, to help win because, um, you know, I've, I've got a David Brailsford uh, affection and that might come from my former boss, Thomas Dimitrov. He's the team principal for uh, the Ineos Grenadiers cycling team. Um, and he talks about marginal gains, right? And the, the 1%, uh, it's, it's, it's really written out well. Folks on a reading list, um, I highly recommend James Clear's Atomic Habits book. Great read. Um, a uh, little plug in there, but <laughs> like this, this idea of whatever, wherever we can affect change, wherever we can add value. Um, now even pile on another, another book, like in John McChrystal's team of teams, it's the interdependence where we all have a role. We all have some um, effect to the mission success or failure. And if, if I can be a part of a football operation, Sal, um, if that's in a, another chief of staff type capacity or, you know, growing through a scouting rank um, I, I, or even a, even a coaching rank, whatever, you know, it's just a matter of uh, 
really just helping the team win and doing everything possible for an interdisciplinary approach to help those players be as successful as they can on Sunday um, and uh, win championships. I'll use a, a cliche here. Do you feel like you're kind of living the dream right now or no? Oh, every day is a blessing, Sal. And uh, I, I'm more often than not, uh, if I'm ever asked how I'm doing, I'm better than I deserve. It's, it's, it's that, uh, that true uh, because, really, I've got so much to be grateful for. And uh, it's what I'm living right now. Heck, I get to talk with you. You kidding me? Oh, it, it, absolutely, it's right? Living the dream. <laughs> we're we're going to have to have you back on when Steve can – can be here because we're missing Steve Anderson and like the, the back and forth that we have with Steve. I mean, come on. I mean, we're missing the fit Fitty, right? Fitty. Oh, Fitty Hollywood. Uh, I, um, I, 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 t- I tell a good story. A time. Oh, well, there's so many of them, but I, I want to, I want to make sure it shows. I hope other guys have, have alluded to similar things. Like I tell them every single time, I am writing a scouting report or doing any sort of evaluation. And I am looking at a leadership metric or a leadership bar as to um, not even what the standard is, but what is the highest level? What What is the exemplary leader of a football team look like? That is Steve Anderson to a T uh, in, in regards to what he could be as a motivator, as a um, individual to hold folks accountable, uh, to put an arm around you and tell you he loves you, uh, and knowing through well all of his blood and his heart beats for ball and football and those teammates to win. You, you can't, uh, you can't define it any closer to perfection. So uh, Steve is um, an amazing man and it was an honor uh, and really a, it's something I still look back to to think I had a locker next to him for three years, 49 and 50. Um, yeah. It's just one of a kind. So Right. Yeah, I just I was happy. Um, just as a side note, just looking at how Steve's career finished, right? And those you talked about how that senior class's year finished with a ball win because a year before he, you know, he had his season cut down to injury. So he, it, it, like we talked about from the start. I mean, that was a great way for a great way for that senior class to end, and a great way for you to kind of take that senior class, right? And what they, I mean, probably taught you a lot of how they operated that season and to get it going, right? You probably learned a lot of life lessons. So. Sal, but they, they, they taught us what, what right looked like. And they, they pushed all of us to work harder. They pushed me to work harder. They pushed Andrew Rodriguez to work harder. They pushed Steve Erzinger to work harder. They pushed Brad Kelly to work harder. Austin Barr, Josh Jones, Max Jenkins. Like I, I, I'm sure I'm, I know I'm Antoine Aaron, Jordan Pleasance, Brogan Carnes, Robert Kava, like all my teammates, like Chad Littlejohn, Bill Prosco, I think because now you now you're gonna be self-conscious you forgot one of them. But like <laughs> literally, um, you know, they they had a standard of excellence. They wanted to do great things, and um, we had to keep up and we had to we had to work hard and and be a part of it. And guys like um Urs and A-Rod, um, you know, Brad A B, like they they had those contributions and you know, we're a, we all were a part of it. But um yeah, it was uh it was special because they taught they taught leadership stuff, you know, and you know, Urs had his own leadership style, A-Rod has his his own leadership style, Max had his own, and um that that class before us and even the one before us that like it was it was special. It was cool, really cool. Um, I'm yeah. rambling, but it's just taking me back memory lane, so I can't help it. I'm there sorry. we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean you look at the just some of the talent that passed through West Point at that point. I mean there there were talented players and there were teams that were just on the cusp of like that 2010 team had it happen for them. There were teams that just were on the cusp of making something happen there. And it was, it, it's been, it's been great to catch up with you, Justin. We really appreciate your time. Um, we'll be following you in the Falcons uh, down the road. Yeah. We got to see what we're going to be watching like the draft boards now for the Falcons, right. Coming up in the next few months. So it's seeing, oh. seeing who you guys are, who you guys take and stuff. We will keep yes. an eye on that. Oh no! Uh, uh, thanks for having me on, Sal. It really was—it was a treat to be on here. Uh, certainly missing Steve because you know that's that's the real entertainment in the show. That, that's that's yeah. who folks are out there to listen. Um, it was fun. You and I got a chance to talk, but uh, no, really, thanks. It, it was a treat, and um, you know, best luck to you guys. And I'm, I'm sure there'll be more, way better guests coming here uh, after me. That's for sure. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. This was one of our best podcasts, just the in-depth about your journey. And we really appreciate your time, Justin, and all the best to you with the Falcons. Oh, thanks, Al. Appreciate you. 
Thank you for listening to the Black Knight Nation podcast with your host, Sal Interdonato. For more information on your Army Black Knights, visit blackknightnation.com.